Welcome back. This is a PT Pearl on the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And we are coming at you on our <laughs> clinical table this time <laughs> to kind of drop some knowledge on breath work, why we do it with clients, how it relates to pain in the body, and what you can start to do to address it now and actually understand this thing called breath work that everyone talks about. And if you're getting a little blinded, I don't know if you noticed this little bling a ling <laughs> on her finger. We just got engaged maybe a few weeks before this is coming out, but sorry if that's distracting. <laughs> yeah, so to dive right in, why do we breathe and kind of what messages is that sending our system based on maybe how we react to the environment around us? So immediately we do want to touch on, you know, our autonomic nervous system. So we have this automatic <laughs> nervous system, you can say. Mm -hmm. And that is where we've probably heard the terms parasympathetic, sympathetic. And we used to think, again, autonomic, meaning automatic, we have no control over this. This is just what your body does and it reacts in different situations. We have now studied and learned a lot more about the body as we continue to learn, like we might even change some of the things that we say as we continue to learn, right? But right now we understand that based on how we use the breath, we can control into different states. So I can drive into and ramp up into my sympathetic, this fight, flight, freeze type of place, or I can drive down and turn off that state and tap onto more of a parasympathetic rest, relax, and digest state. Yeah, no, and that's just the way that, again, automatic or autonomic nervous system, I like to say that there is a portion that's automatic mm -hmm. and there is this thing inside of us that reacts based on an environmental stimuli, whatever it is that gets thrown at us. And a lot of that comes from how we're programmed as beings, both mm -hmm. how we learned early in life and different like inherent things that we take on from our parents or different genetic factors that just make us want to react to different things. Like some people find snakes really scary and they go, <gasps> And we have this initial scared response where mm -hmm. some other people will see that and not have that reaction. But beyond that reaction, there's a way that we can thoughtfully, mindfully respond and then kind of control volitionally or voluntarily control that autonomic nervous system. Especially as it relates to pain, chronic pain especially. So think of anything lasting over three months, over six months, something that continuously recurrently comes back over and over and over again throughout the years. Well, if we're in a more sympathetic driven place, we're automatically telling our body that it needs to be on guard more. When it is on guard more, it is automatically releasing more stress responses, more cortisol. And so if we're driving up and ramping into that sympathetic tone more, we are going to have more inflammation, just a part of our body. We can get this pain response to automatically shift. No matter like I've had people crying on my table because they're like, I don't understand how this back pain of five years has suddenly disappeared off of what you're doing. And I'm like, I'm not doing anything. You are. And that's where it becomes so empowering to use these tools and turn off that initial stress situation that you have underlying you possibly for a long period of time and give you the tools to actually reduce that inflammation, reduce that sensitivity to pain and reduce mm -hmm. the way that your nerves are responding to your brain and sending signals that you're in pain. Everybody has a different resting and initial state. And again, when we talk about our ability to change the way we breathe and affect this autonomic nervous system, we impact how almost every system in our body is operating from our heart to our veins and our blood pressure to the pain sensors. We can activate just our natural T cells by doing different breath techniques, the way we produce blood cells, everything, lymphatic system. So we can go on and on. We we're actually doing a little dive into some research and just how they're studying how different practices implement breath treatment. And one of the cool conclusions that I saw was that Someone said, if we don't address how someone's breathing when they come into our office, then we're not, we may be allowing them to sit there in this fight or flight state while we're presenting information to them 
and just their openness and readiness to receive any of that may be completely gone. Let's go over it like a basic breath cycle. So if we look at the inhalation phase and the exhalation phase, that's how we breathe, right? Well, now if I, now someone scares you. <laughs> <laughs> what did he just do? He just did. <gasps> an inhalation phase and hold. So all that did is ramp up everything that he's doing in the inhalation. What does that also do? Fight, flight, freeze. So that is automatically your sympathetic state. Just think of that intense inhalation, that hold on the inhalation as that sympathetic. What we're also doing, your body gets really tense and tight because it goes into a guarding protective mode. And so now think about breathing in this inhalation phase and rising the shoulders up to your ears and telling your body you're stressed, you're stressed, you're stressed over and over again, of course, everything is gonna get tight. And especially when we're in pain and our body is like, this is bad, I am tensing up against it, what does it do? So if we can start to combat that with now thinking about more of the exhalation, think about going to get a massage and everything just, ah, right? <laughs> so it when we just are able to just in that little phase, if I can just think longer exhalation, shorter inhalation, hmm. I automatically start to shift things. Okay, so that's great and dandy and all. <laughs> we know what the parasympathetic and what the sympathetic is and when that's kind of activating during the different portions of breath. I also hear all this stuff about diaphragmatic breathing. and People talk about belly breathing and what exactly that means, how we know we're doing it right. And then do you want to show a little example of how we can bring awareness to where we're sitting with our breath if we're in more of a parasympathetic or sympathetic state? 100, 100%. It's just that as we extend that exhale, we actually turn off our on switch. Our on switch is that sympathetic. So if you just think about that, mm -hmm. I am turning off that alert switch. Okay, so you're gonna come to the middle here. Mm -hmm. little bit. Sent a stage. <laughs> so I am using what's called a rock floss from Rock Tape. Um, honestly, you could use a TheraBand. What I like about this is that it's thicker and so it kind of is tackier to you and so it'll stay in place. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the low rib cage on him and we're going to wrap, oh, <laughs> knocked into you. We're going to wrap the band right around his low rib cage. Not too tight. I mean, we want him to breathe, but we just want him to feel feedback. Not like bow constrictor or 1970s corset level, but like <laughs> just a nice tight little spandex or something. <laughs> Didn't know where I was going with that. <laughs> All right, so when we're thinking about actually activating and being able to use our diaphragm, our diaphragm rests right underneath the rib cage, the low rib cage. So especially when we're thinking about diaphragmatic breathing, what we should be thinking about is expanding from that low rib cage first, and then that will expand into the belly, into the chest, into other areas. But we don't wanna necessarily just be thinking about belly breathing because then we're not getting the expansion from that low rib cage. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I like to put people in a good position, first of all, of how we're going to align the rib cage over the pelvis so that we can actually get that rib cage to expand great. Because if I'm in a hunched over position, usually where I'm gonna breathe into is into my chest. Or if I am in a super extended position, again, where am I gonna breathe into is more of my chest. So what, we, what I like to say is kind of having exactly how he is, the knees lower than the hips is so ideal here. So if you're sitting in a chair, it's a lot easier to make sure that the knees are lower than the hips, okay? And what this automatically does is you're able to find your sit bones, your ischial tuberosities a lot better, which are those big prominent bones that you'll kind of feel. So if they kind of stick out and you don't really feel them anymore, or if they go away, if you come back, find right where you can find that sweet spot right on top. And automatically that kind of starts to align the spine. Oh, crazy. Mm. <laughs> Okay, and then relax into the upper body and the shoulders. Now, what I want you to focus on as you take a breath in, I want you to think about taking a breath into this band that's right around the low rib cage. If you don't have a tight band, what you could do is just wrap a blanket or a towel right around your low rib cage area, give it a little squeeze. And as you take a breath in, think of like a four second inhale, pushing pressure into this band on the sides particularly. We always forget about these sides. And then take a really slow breath out for about six to eight seconds, maybe even 10 seconds. Don't force yourself. So for some people, this is gonna be a hard practice is to get a really long exhale. So we could just go into like a four second inhale, four second exhale, 
totally fine, okay? We're gonna get into box breathing in just a second too. So what this is doing here is I'm teaching him by using this compressive force on the rib cage, I'm teaching his body how to respond against that compression and open up. It's like having the Thera loop around your knees. You know how a lot of people do banded squats around the knees and we're pulling the knees in together and teaching the knees how to pull out so that the glutes work. It's the same thing around the rib cage. So we can use this, this concept in other places. We can even go ahead and put him into, how about you get on your hands and knees? Okay, so we can even go in quadruped, we can even go into cat cow. And every time he's in cat cow, I want him to think as he takes a breath in, he's expanding from this uh, around this band, and as he takes a breath out, he's feeling this band compress. And he can move through different positions, okay? He can go fast, he can go slow, he can go into different regular movements that he might want. Um, and then he can go into rotation. So even coming down into child's pose, and then bringing the elbows underneath you, in this child's pose, putting one hand behind your head. And what he's gonna do, he's gonna take a breath into this band as he rotates up. And then take a breath out as he comes down. And actually taking a breath in, we have a lot of intercostals between the rib cage as well. So taking a breath in actually helps to expand and get a little bit more motion in that rotation. Usually the thought process again is the other way. We wanna exhale to gain more rotation. But actually for the rib cage and around these muscles that we want to start to open up and activate, we want to inhale as we go around. Okay, now coming onto your back. <laughs> One of the things that we're also now gonna just talk about is regular box breathing. So for box breathing, think about it exactly as that, a box. <laughs> so if we're gonna do like a four second inhale, we're gonna think of the pressure around this rib cage coming in, and then a two second hold at the top, turning on that parasympathetic, and then taking a nice four second exhale, turning off, that sympathetic, taking a two second pause. And odd, and then he'll just keep going through that. So, or you could do four second, four second, four, four. Sometimes holding for four seconds is a lot harder for the system. So I like to do just a two second hold, about a four second inhale, two second hold, four second exhale, two second hold. What you're doing is you're automatically bringing your attention into your body, into your breath, into this rib cage. We're getting the diaphragm to learn how to expand again. And if we wanna really think about strengthening that diaphragm, getting that better action. We actually want to take about a four second inhale, about an eight second, eight second exhale through the mouth. So we want to think about pursed lips as we exhale, because this way we're really getting into like blowing out a lot of candles and we're actually helping to kind of put pressure onto that air as we push everything out. So we get these intercostals working, we get the transverse and we get the pelvic floor to all kind of program and work together. And when we get this full around the rib cage, around the abdominal area, and even down into the pelvis, then that's how we start to really work everything together and get this pressure system to work better. When we can get this working better, we get everything on the outside working better. I promise you, your shoulders are gonna start to free up your hips are gonna to start to free up your knees, your back pressure. All of this pressure around you can start to release just by coming back to this basic, basic breath pattern. And with that pursed, breath, pursed lip breathing, it's kind of similar to having the band around my rib cage where this provides the resistance for my diaphragm mm -hmm. on the way in. You know, as the pursed lip is also providing more resistance to that diaphragm on the way out and that complex of diaphragm, pelvic floor, and our abdominal muscles. Yeah. Um, a couple other techniques and tools that you can use, um, humming on the way out as you exhale. So him and I, especially when we do breath work together, we like to get into humming phases. Um, not only is that going to release more nitric oxide as you're doing your breath pattern, which nitric oxide is gonna help to vasodilate those blood vessels, so we're automatically gonna kinda open up those blood vessels. Um, but humming is also getting more into that parasympathetic and and it's helping because we start to activate that core, that deep core and the pelvic floor together in a what we call an eccentric manner onto yeah. that 
pelvic floor area. So it's almost like it's lengthening, but it's working at the same time. So we're putting those muscles on stretch, but also working them at the same time. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us for another PT Pearl on breath work, one of our favorites. Um, if you loved what we did, subscribe below, comment, let us know what you guys wanna hear more about. We're making one of these a week and we need topics to know what you guys wanna know. Yeah, and let us know if you try it. Go about five minutes today, even two minutes. We did a quick two minute thing together earlier today. Mm -hmm. It is so incredibly important. So just, there's no time limit. Explore your body, explore what you can do and let us know how it feels.